The gloves are coming off. We're about to go full court press. It's time to play ball. Listen in as we tackle everything in the world of sports right now. Right now. Throw your hat in the ring at 516-572-7440. Huddle up. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I can tell we're having fun here because it's Friday. It's the afternoon. It's also Friday afternoon. Do you know what that means, Nick, right? I do. I really do. Sorry, I'm still laughing about something else. You're you're the best number one, number two, Nick. That's right. I'm I'm everybody's number number one, number two. (laughs) You are listening to WHPC Sports Talk. You're on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Eric Bichetti alongside me. I have Nick Gornberger, the resident Kansas City Chiefs fan. That's me. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. That's nice, Nick. That's nice, Nick. I have Matt Sharkowick. What's going on, guys? Nothing much, nothing much. Zach Calabrese. Eric, how's your day going, man? It's going great. It's going great. I like your shirt. Thank you. Wu-Tang for life, man. And 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 you know where they're from? Of course, Shaolin, uh, the Staten Island. Yeah, Staten Island. There you go. And, of course, he's back, but for the last time, probably until March, Dominic Arbolino. How are you, Eric? I'm great, Dom. How are you, buddy? I'm doing okay. Okay. Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you really sure about that, our resident New York Jets fan, along with uh, Zach? I'm... (laughs) Oh, I dropped my phone. (laughs) You're so mad you dropped the phone. I'd like to just point out, he's not the resident New York Jets fan anymore. Now he's just kind of dorming here. So... (laughs) <laughs> no, all right. we, we have to pay. No, he's got to pay us rent. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you Housing gotta... fees and then Man. fee fees. I'm uh, not doing as bad as you think. <laughs> I, I, I believe. You. I, I, know, I know what you're. You know, you're kind of leading to. So. I, I'm not leading. I'm hinting at it. I'm basically poking a sleeping bear right now. So, so let's get sleeping. right in. No, no, not you. I'm talking about the Jets fan base. <laughs> so, a lot of people do not like what the New York Jets did as they hired the former Miami Dolphins head coach Adam. Gase to be their new head coach. And along with Gase, it's being reported and pretty much almost finalized that Greg Williams will join him on his staff as the defensive coordinator. Dominic, your time to shine. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. When the news first broke, I was really, I was not happy. You guys know, you know, I was really not happy about the deal because I thought, you know, there's just better options out there. I will say this, I wasn't a fan of really bringing in Mike McCarthy because I'm going to be honest, even though he has been a good head coach throughout his time, he only won one Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers, I think that is really that says something. I know they didn't have the best connection, but still, it's Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, if not the best, and you only win one. But so as I was thinking about it, I feel like I had to take the, the you know like a day or two to really have it settle in. No, I'm going to be honest. I know I believe I really you. wasn't a fan of it at the time. But you, you just know, lock yourself in the room. And he the came dark from a Nick Saban background because mm-hmm. he was part of the staff in LSU. You know, he worked with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's been praising him. Was really good with Cutler in Chicago, Tebow in Denver. And, you know, he made the playoffs with the Dolphins the first year with Tannehill. And Tannehill was great that yes. first year. Yes. And, you know, he had a winning record with Ryan Tannehill, which, you know, says something. As we all know, I don't really think Ryan Tannehill is the best quarterback. Um, oh, you can say it. He's terrible. As a Jets fan, you know, you can't, you can't do anything about it. So you have to deal with it, whether you like it or not. But I think, you know, what's really, what I like about it is that you see Sam Darnold. He was thrilled about the move, which I think means a lot. You have also Jeffrey making comments uh, yesterday about how, you know, he praises, you know, not only Adam Gase working with him in Chicago. He, oh, he was glowing. But then, yeah, he's also, you know, saying, you know, Sam Darnold has the chance to be the Super Bowl MVP, you know, like if, if you know, if he ever was to make it there. So I think, like, I will admit, I... Didn't like it at first. I'm still settling into it, but I like the praise he's getting around the league. And I think the whole thing is that he just really had an unfair chance in Miami. I think I said that either um, either on Monday show or last Friday show. I, uh, he didn't have the best chance in Miami. And I think, you know, you look at the issues with the three players there specifically. You had Jay Ajayi, you had Jarvis Landry, Kenyon Drake, and then Kenyon Drake just recently because he said, you know, if, you know, Nick, uh, excuse me, Adam Gase isn't gone, then. I'm going to request a trade. I'm going to request a trade. So I think you have those issues where he wanted those players to play, you know, like how he wanted them to. But, you know, they didn't. They were different, I guess, you know. And I. The situation there, I, I don't really think that's going to be the biggest issue. And, you know, again, I would have preferred. You know, I, I know a lot of people didn't like him or, you know, it was risky, but like Kingsbury, I, I, I thought that was cool. Would you have preferred Caldwell? No. 
No, I okay. said I said this I, either Friday or Monday too. No, I definitely do not want Jim. Didn't want Jim Cal- Caldwell. I want really Todd Monken. Okay, to be honest okay, with you, fair. that's that's what I would have preferred. But hey, they're stuck with Adam Gase, or I should say, the Jets fans are stuck with Adam Gase. <laughs> you know, you can't really do anything about it. And when it comes to just you know moving on with Greg Williams, I personally like the guy. I think he, even though the Browns, you know, didn't have the best season, you saw improvement. And I think that, you know, watching Hard Knocks, honestly, you got really a good taste of how he's a coach. And he is, he is brutal. He, like, oh, he you, leads with an iron fist. If you are lazy, he's going to eat you alive. Oh, he's going to tear into you. And that's what I can't wait for. And if I you're can't wait for Leonard near, Williams to hear it. And if you're anywhere near good on the other team, he will pay a bounty to have you killed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah, from his time with the Saints. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Same guy. Remember so, that. Remember yeah. that. I was I'm, fun. I'm saying it was higher. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I I'm not saying I like the hires that much, but I I, I you, you can't do anything about it. Were any one about it. were any one of these guys that were interviewed, not even just hired, were any one of these guys that the Jets interviewed a slam dunk hire? Um, or or would have been a slam dunk hire because when, when the news came out that Gase was hired by the Jets, I was surprised. I, I really was. I, was I thought I thought they were going to go the route of McCarthy. I really truly Me did. Too. But were any of these guys really a slam dunk to you? Uh, I mean, not. I wouldn't say like they were to die for. Like you had to sign them right away. Uh, like I would have liked Bruce Aaron. If there was one guy that I, if if I could have had the opportunity to pick, I would have. I personally liked Bruce Arians the best, but I I still think I don't think Gase is that is to, you know by far he's not he's not even close to the worst. I mean he didn't do he didn't do that terrible given the teams that he was coaching. So I'm gonna go optimistic with Gase. But if there was that one guy I would have loved, I would have loved to see Bruce Arians. And and I just want to talk about something in particular here. You you mentioned his time in Denver when Peyton Manning was there. And uh, he was glowing, glowing about Adam Gaze. But he also did the same thing in Cleveland, where he tried to promote Adam Gaze to the Browns. And Dorsey was like, thanks, but no thanks. Oh, and I don't care about what Dorsey has no, to say. No, I, 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 I get it. But doesn't that... I'm, I'm not saying that this isn't a bad hire. I kind of like it, honestly. Because he leads... And, for, and first up, but before I go on, did you see what a lot of the complaints were about Adam Gaze? If, if the running game was working, he would try and outsmart everybody and then outsmart himself by then switching to the pass, which infuriated a lot of players, but a lot of coaches do that anyway. A lot of the players really didn't like him, but that's something that I also want to bring up. A lot of people did not want to play for Bill Parcells either. A lot of people don't want to play for Bill Belichick either, but they played hard for him. So this can be a good thing, because you know what all the Jets players said about Todd Bowles. Oh, we love him, we love the guy. Yeah. How did that work out for him? I, sometimes being a nice guy can be your biggest downfall. Yeah, Nice guys finish last. Come on now. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. clearly did That's finish last. <laughs> But but Zach, what do you think about the hire for Gase? I think I think you know you look at everyone else, and you know I had some friends that were also you know they were they were on the Cliff Kinsbury train. They wanted the guy from USC, but I think with all of these coaches, there's a good side to them and a bad side to them because you have someone like Kinsbury. You know he did well in college, but there's always that you know it, it gets me a little nervous whenever a college coach is coming to the NFL just because he would have to make the transition. So I think that's the bad side on him. I, I mean, McCarthy, you know, as, as good as he done throughout his season with the, uh, his seasons with the, with the Packers, recently he's clearly hasn't been doing anything with Aaron Rodgers. He's one of the best, you know, hands down, one of the best quarterbacks still in the league. So, you know, there's a bad side to him. So, honestly, I don't think there was a right guy. I think just whoever they have, and now that it's Gase, they just have to make sure that this works. Do you think, because McCarthy also came out and said that the only job that he was willing to do was to do the uh, New York Jet job. So do you think that hurt him because no one else wanted to hire him? Yeah, I mean, I, I could I could see it. I could see it hurting him now. I mean, if he really was putting the Jets in, in you know, as his um as his main basket, he's putting all his eggs in that basket. I could see that coming back to bite him now. I mean, I don't even know who's really left that that where he could potentially go at this point. All right, now before we go on, we do have a call on the line. Call you are on WHBC Sports Talk. What's up? Told you I'd call in. Hey, what's up, Jacob? What's up? Nothing much, guys. What's going on with you? Nothing much. This is Jacob Valk, the former host of Beyond the Game here on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. Jacob, I know exactly why you're calling in Adam Gase. What do you think? 
I was going to call in about women's water polo. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. What do you think <laughs> I mean, about the Irish women's water polo? some of these girls that they polo. have are really athletic, and they're the future mothers of my children. And I got oh, well, that disturbs saying in a while. everybody in the room. <laughs> 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 now, what I want to know is what kind of athletes are we talking on this water polo? I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> what do you got? Um, I like the gaze higher. He was the fifth guy on my list. Um, you know, he did get the most out of Tannehill, got the most out of Cutler, most out of Moore, most out of Osweiler. Yeah. Dominic, I want to talk to you about Kingsbury. The fact that you want him, to me, is ridiculous. All right. I mean, I understand that you, you know, I understand the background of him not being in the NFL. and I He was an under 500 head coach at Texas Tech. Yes, but, you know, I think the offensive guru, I, I like that. He's not an offensive guru. I don't know. I, I think He's Dominic- a coordinator. That's all he is. I, if you I want to make him offensive coordinator, I have no problem with that. But to tell me that he should be head coach, that's ridiculous. I think that what we'll people are trying to say, well, yeah, exactly. See, see this how it works out. By the way, he sets himself about Josh Rosen and Kyler Murray, too. It's a little bit of a no, iffy no, things going on. That's not going to happen. That I, I, I know, right but away. still, I'm like, I was kind of <laughs> impressed that he said that. I'd be like, wow, you're already throwing your quarterback under the bus. That's interesting. But especially with Kingsbury, Jacob, I think you can agree that the new trend in the NFL, uh, not not just to seclude it just to him, but people want to find the next Sean McVay. They I wanna, get it. Yes, they, 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 they want to find the next young offensive mind because that's where the NFL is going. And the fact that that has led some people to a below average college coach should tell you something. It should tell you that this trend has gone too far. If your number one guy is Cliff Kingsbury because you want someone to run an offense, you really need to reevaluate your priorities. Well, the Jets dodged a bullet. Let's let's talk about number ones for a second. Didn't you just say that Adam Gase was your number five? And all due respect to you, Jake, Kingsbury I, was not a bug I'm, su- I'm not suggesting he was. What I'm suggesting is, I think that regardless of this argument, the Jets lost here anyway. When you're taking what you consider their number five choice, or in your mind, the number five choice, <laughs> they have failed here. They have just hired a sub-500 coach who did, listen, had one good year, just like Todd Bowles did. One no, I good get year. it. I, you just traded in Bowles for crappier Bowles. Or, yeah, no, Gates. No, 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 Gates is better than Bowles. I, I, you, I, you, you cannot make that argument. Sure you can. I can. You look can. at, look at what Gates' records were the, the past same. two years, and look at Bowles' record the past two years. Oh, for God. They're All right, right hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me go back to your first point. With go ahead. Yes. That well, Gates by the way, who were your guy. other four choices? Gates, uh, my order top five was Biennemi, okay, LaFleur, okay. Chris Peterson, and David Shaw. But the yeah. Jets only interviewed two of those top five, the enemy and Gase. And the fact, guys- the, enemy, the fact that the enemy has not gotten a head coaching job tells me something. It tells me that he may not be ready to be an NFL head coach. And and also, one of the guys on your list was I, actually a couple of days ago reported to be one of the finalists, which took me by surprise, was Matt Rule. I uh, Rule was kind of low on my list. He has very limited experience at Baylor. I understand the turnaround from one win to seven wins of beating a good Vanderbilt team in the bowl game. I get it, but I think he's better off spending another year at Baylor. Can I ask you a question? Why is it that it's it's not just him? There's a lot of Baylor coaches and Baylor players who always seem to get a lot of press. What is it about coaches and players coming out of Baylor? We always hear about it, and I don't understand why. They really like Jeff Dunham. I, Jeff Dunham went to Baylor. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, I like him. <laughs> I like him too. <laughs> I'm actually reading his book. It's a very good book. He wrote I'm sure a book. It is. Yeah, he um all by myself. It's a very good book. Ah, oh, very ironic, isn't it? I was reading it on the train yesterday, coming home from the uh, Islander Ranger game. A lot of puppets everywhere with uh, Jeff Dunham. But, <laughs> but yeah, so what else is on your mind? Uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, the Kingsbury stuff was nonsense to me. I'm glad, Dominic, that you've turned the corner on Gase. I do think he'll work out. I was surprised they went with Gase. I did think they were going to go Caldwell. But you know what? I like Gase more. And I think they got this right. Okay, now, I brought it up to Zach and Dom here. Um, obviously, Mike McCarthy was in the whirlwind of the Jets, and he yeah, also I'm, came out and I'm, said... I'm with Dominic on this one. I, I didn't want him. I don't know how good of a head coach he really is. I understand he won his Super Bowl. It's hard to win in this league. You can't take that away from him. But 
the last couple years he's had just tells me that he's not a quarterback whisperer. And the Jets need a quarterback whisperer to get Darnold to that Super Bowl MVP level. And Mike McCarthy said it himself. He's going to be taking a year off. That's he's right. going to, you know, his family. I remember reading a report on this. You know, he told his family they were happy to hear it. And I think that, you know, honestly, I think next year he's going to be a top candidate as well. I, I think, think so too. Me too. And it's helped, it's helped a lot of coaches you've seen in the past. They take the year off and then, you know, they get back into, you know, head coaching and hopefully. Check and Pete Carroll, fine they, example. All this is doing, and, and uh, Jake, back me up here. The only reason he didn't, he was saying he would take the Jets' job is because he was getting his quarterback of the future right away. And the only reason he's not uh, uh, looking to coach anywhere else this year, he is driving his price tag up. He will be so much more valuable next year than he is this year. That's uh, just, I agree with you a hundred percent, Nick. I think that there are going to be a lot of head coaches who. Maybe out of a job next year, uh, the Giants, the Cowboys, uh, the Redskins, basically every team in the NFC East not named the Eagles. And it's nice to be the R- biggest wait, fish in a small pond. Wait, wait, wait. The Giants? Really? I've heard rumors that Shermer may be on the block. Really? Get okay. out of here. Really? Yeah, I heard that too. All right, good. Wow. See that? Why? Hold on. Another question. <laughs> why is Dominic there and not me? Where did my invite go? It's because he was in the area. That's why. I was having one for Sean and Carl Place today. I didn't know that until I made it with him. That's why. Oh, come on, Eric. You just don't want me around. That's not true. Six people Next time. in this room. Next time. Next time. How about that? All right. <laughs> Deal? Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Take care. All right. Love you. Miss you. Bye, buddy. Hope right. you find your One dad. One thing I want to say before we move on from the Jets, because I know there's a lot of other coaches we have to get to, and then obviously the playoffs. Um, I think the main thing with the Jets is that they wanted a guy that is going to guide Darnold, and they felt comfortable with him, and I yep. think that that is the main reason of the signing, and I just hope it works out. Just stupid question really quick before I go on. Obviously, we know Mike McCarthy was you know, the head coach there when Favre was there, and then he led into Aaron Rodgers. Do you give McCarthy credit, and it's it's okay because I've heard conflicting reports on this from other fans, of Packer fans to be specific. Do you give McCarthy credit from going away from Favre to Rogers, or was that the ownership? Uh, uh, ownership I think that was the yeah. ownership. You guys yeah. were pretty young when that all. Like, I, I think you guys were like what eight, nine. Yeah, I was pretty young. I was definitely young. When was that was young. When, and, when I'm not, Favre I'm was not, on the app. I, I remember that that they were sick and tired of the. Uh, I'm thinking about retiring. I'm not going to retire. That was seesawing for years yes, and was. years. They knew and what it they were sitting when he on. Left the Packers too. He did yeah. it with the Jets and then went to yeah. the Vikings. Yeah, right. the ownership of the Packers were done with it. They were sick and tired to Brett Favre. That's why that happened. Had nothing to do with McCarthy. They told him this is it. We're done with him. Okay, so maybe that's also what learned you know, other head coaching vacancies to steer away from Mike McCarthy because they don't know what he truly is without Aaron Rodgers. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, I think, thought, Don't you think that's silly, though? We don't know what Belichick is without Brady or the vice versa. Well, well, you said they... How many games did they win with Castle when Brady went down? I believe it was 11 games. Is that a system thing or is that a Belichick thing? I, I'm, I think it's both, but regardless, I, I, I'm, I'm just... I just think the point is so silly. If you put, they don't have the same success without each other. So, so they but don't you can't know. Tell me for certain, and I can't tell anybody for certain that they're they he can't win a Super Bowl without Brady. That Brady can't win a Super Bowl without him. I can't tell you for certain that that McCarthy couldn't have won a Super Bowl without Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest to ever do it. We know that. Mike McCarthy isn't. He he's won a Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong; that's important. Uh, consistent playoff team. Consistent yes. playoff team for years and years and years. When you think about it, except perennial. for the last two years. But uh, I, I I just think it's silly to to get down on Mike McCarthy's abilities as a coach when he did bring a city a Super Bowl. So with. One of the greatest of all time, but how many? How often is it without one of the best quarterbacks of all time Look, anymore? And and you're right about that. And specifically on the Brady Belichick point, we won't know because if one goes, the other one's not too far behind him. But you are listening to WHPC Sports Talk here on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. I'm Eric Fischer alongside. I got Nick Ormberger. Hi. Hey. I got Matt Sharkowick. Hey. Zach Calabrese. What's up? Dominic Arbolino. <laughs> and you're going to hear from Eleanor Chompy just a little bit later. So Dom, let's go to your man crush. The Arizona Cardinals hired. Oh, Cliff Cross. Kingsbury <laughs> as their new head coach, and Vance Joseph as their defensive coordinator. What, what do we think about this one? I uh, think it's interesting. Well, I, I'll be honest. I like Vance Joseph as a defensive coordinator. Definitely not as a head coach. I'll see what he can do. I mean, they've lost a lot of pieces over the years. Uh, the Cardinals on defense, like Campbell, and then you yeah. know, got Honey Badger. But, you know, they do have some you know bright spots there. Um, I mean, here's the thing. With Cliff... 
Again, I I think he has the opportunity <laughs> to possibly be like again one of the next offensive gurus. Like I said, you know, I think obviously not as good as Sean McVay. You can't praise anybody as you know like to be the next Sean McVay. What an it's honor, hard. though, right? You want to find that guy, yeah, of course, and. I think what made me, you know, happy about, you know, at least what looking at Kingsbury is what he was able to do with the quarterbacks that he worked with in college. And I understand that's just the quarterbacks at you know, as Jacob said, not the best records in college, but you know, we'll see what the Cardinals are gonna do with it. I mean, again, the Cardinals I feel like were one of the less attractive teams to me. I'm right. I, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm we're just going to see what happens there. It's and, and besides, Larry Fitzgerald's future is in limbo right now. You don't know if he's going to retire. There have been speculations about that. You don't know if he's going to come back. But I think the most intriguing thing about the Cardinals right now is strictly Josh Rosen and the number one overall pick, because you can go a bunch of different ways with that. Yeah. And and the reason why I said that there were a lot of things going on in Arizona, because obviously Cliff Kingsbury said, I would think before he got the Cardinals job that he would draft Kyler Murray, who has a huge shot of declaring for the NFL, which would be a huge turnaround for a lot of teams. Teams, that he would take Kyler Murray number one. And I'd be so stupid to do that. I'm sorry. I understand you can get a decent amount for Josh Rosen, but you are just wasting, I think, the number one overall pick there. You have, you already committed to a first round quarterback last year. I don't care if that. You, you traded know, up to get him, too. Yeah, I don't care if Kingsbury, you know, wants, you know, Murray. Deal with it. I'm sorry. Deal with it. Deal, and, deal with Rosen. He has the potential to be good. You need to use his first round pick on another position you need. I think personally, as much as I would hate to see it, because I would like the Jets to you know have Nick Bosa fall to them. I think they should be taking him because if you pair up Bosa and Chandler Jones on your mm-hmm. defensive line, you know it's a lot of trouble for the offensive line and any other quarterback they're going to be facing. Right, and you know what? That that's true. And I got a funny feeling that. Bosa might slip. I, ha- I have a funny feeling that the Cardinals might screw this up. I hope they don't. I think Bosa would be good for them, like you said, by putting him and Chandler Jones on the same defense. That's not only scary, but you know what? It could make noise, and it could attract a lot of free agents in the future if you have those two guys just on the same defense. Now, to keep it going, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hire Bruce Arians as their new head coach. Zach, you've been praising Bruce yeah. Arians a lot. What do you think about and this they hire? Did exactly, and he, they did, he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He takes Todd Bowles right away as his defensive coordinator. <laughs> Coordinated, they're going right back to it. It's it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I don't know I don't know what the Bucks plans are, if they're gonna be sticking with Winston, if they're gonna be looking for a quarterback they this season. Are, they want to try and stick with they Winston. They do want to stick I, we with Winston. We ran a poll on the WHPC Sports Talk Twitter. By the way, follow us at WHPC Sports Talk. Uh, we ran a poll on Twitter hundred percent when we asked the question, is uh, Jameis Winston the quarterback of the future and for now of uh, uh, in Tampa Bay? Hundred percent everybody agrees. And I I Shocked to say it because I thought he should have been out last year and yep. traded this year. They're going to continue to try with this kid. I think we were banking yep. on Fitzpatrick getting a five year extension in Tampa Bay. That's, that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. But I no. will say, this is funny. Todd Bowles is back with Fitzpatrick. Yeah. But another interesting thing that I don't know if everybody knew, but supposedly, you know, that in the news lately that. You know, Arians and Todd Bowles have been talking about this for the past six weeks. Really? Which means that Bowles either was banking on he's going to get fired, or they already told him. Which I believe, I, I believe they already told him when they met with him. Because you know, you know that that, that was definitely going to happen. So they've been talking about this, and the reason why Bruce Arians wasn't considering the Jets' job at all is because his he knew at, well because he didn't want to do that to Bowles. Their their connection is so strong together, and you know he didn't want to take you know Bowles' old job. Which well, take it a step further. He knew he was getting this job by then. Yeah. So that's that's six weeks ago. That's still regular season. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's week I'm, thirteen. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that's when his job was already up in the air, or if not confirmed at that point. Poor but, uh, cutter. But right. But <laughs> Matt, you've actually been quiet. So I want to ask your opinion on something. Sure. What do you think of Tampa Bay wanting to stick with Winston? What do you think of them wanting to give him a second chance? They just want to see where he's at. You know, I think uh, Winston has been. By, for the most part, a, a decent guy for them. He's been up in the air. He's had a couple good games, some bad games. But uh, I think they want to just see where this is going to go. They want to just ride off of what they were able to do this year, despite how lackluster it was. Uh, Keep in mind, I said uh, Jameis Winston, Winston, not Ryan Win- Fitzpatrick. Winston, me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but still, I, I, I think on. I think the Jameis thing that's... Winston has been a disaster. He has. He, when, he, he, he had a bad year. He not just a bad year. He had an the awful last, year. Over the last two and a half years, he. He leads the league in interceptions and in turnover yep. ratio. He is an awful, he's not, awful protector of the football. He's not been the number one overall pick that they expect. No, th- and that they and want. He, exactly. And by the way, he has yeah. worlds of talent. Oh, I don't he, know. One hundred percent. I have no idea. And why I think he's that's exactly trouble. why they brought Bruce Arians in. 
I think that's exactly why they want to try and fix this kid. They, they don't want to waste up. the number one overall pick. And I think also in terms of you know past seasons, you know you know you can put the blame on him. But with this season, there was so much confusion. I mean, not only did you know he had the suspension to start the year, Fitz, yeah. you know Fitz magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> and then you bring in Winston again. Then you bring in Fitzpatrick, and then you go back to Winston. That was just all terrible coaching right there. Yeah. I think with a new year, a new head coach, this is you know Winston's his last chance. This is the year to prove it. I mean, you don't even, prove even it, you got to move on from it. This is a dude that has despite, had nothing yeah. but chances, though. Go ahead. Even Sorry. despite even despite the such a confusing year, going five and eleven, all of that. What were they? They were still ranked third in offensive yards and first in passing yards yeah, for but the look, season. But look who he's throwing to. You have Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson, right. who is a speed demon, yeah. who actually yeah. might get traded, which I think should happen. Deshaun well, Jackson's going to get a big contract. Oh yeah, he is, which, which is shocking to me that he resurrected what, his career. What right I think now. that is, I understand he requested a trade, but I'm wondering now if that you know the new head coach they brought in with Arians. I'm wondering if that. Would maybe make him want to stay. Maybe. Maybe yeah. hoping that there's a chance that, you know, they could fix it all. Because I feel like, you know, maybe he just wasn't happy with the way, you know, he was being used with the head coach and offensive coordinator. As oh, oh coach, yeah, the role is huge. Even though yeah. you weren't there, as a head coach, and I'm asking you, Dom, specifically, as a head coach, do you want a guy, do you want a guy who requested a trade and then changed his mind? Yeah, I guess you're right. Because you know that 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 just says it shows yeah, about his loyalty kind of guy to me exactly. Yeah. Yeah, also, also, and and this is really open to the floor. Would you really consider trading Deshaun Jackson now, especially like you said with the new head coach in the in the uh, at at the head, and he he can still be used for a lot of things. He's a speed demon, I like think I they said. Still give I him special teams. Teams. Yeah, I think I they should definitely him. still give him some time. At least let him ride out this year. Yes, or, or would, go into the year a little bit. I would absolutely consider it because it does one of two things. Actually, it does both of two things. Number one, you know that Deshaun Jackson is past his prime. Right. So yeah, there's no, there's no future moving forward to Sean Jackson. He's a now guy. Okay. If I was not, about to ask you, is he a win now guy? So the answer to that is yes. He's absolutely correct. Okay. Having said that. You still don't find anything out. You know what? Take weapons away from Jameis Winston. So See take, how he does. So take Evans and Jackson away. No, 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 no. Evans only if you get big time trading chips for him. Oh, I Evans, wouldn't trade Mike Evans at all. If I'm Tampa Bay, I don't trade him. But if I'm offered two ones for him, bye. I'm considering it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, so now to keep it moving along, the Denver Broncos hire Vic Fangio as their new head coach. Fangio has been the Bears' defensive coordinator for the past couple of years. What do we think of this one? Von all in Miller on defense. is going to have the best year of his career. How about Bradley Chubb? Uh, well, he's this is the second year, so I mean, we'll just see. I mean, it'll but, be the best year of his career if he's not better than last year. I think Von Miller. I think he's gonna, you know, thrive with Vangio at the head, and you know, I'm. And then you also have a uh, Kubiak possibly uh, coming back to be the offensive coordinator. I, I don't know if that's that, yeah. official yet, but I know that you know it's been a rumor. So I don't know. Uh, still, the Broncos are a little bit a nifty team. They need to they still need to fix themselves up a little bit. I think it might take a year or two, but they'll get there. They I look at it and say, man. This offense sucks, so we might as well double down on our defense. I mean, Nick, yeah. you see them twice a year as a Chiefs fan. Honestly, I think this is a very remember good... remember before the season, yeah. right? I was worried about them. Nick Chubb, Von Miller, what are we going to do? Yeah, and now... And they were terrible. And now you should be even more nervous, because well, Fangio's defense has been very good, and the Broncos now especially have a really good defense. They already they, have if, <laughs> if, if they fix their offense, honestly, if they move on from Case Keenum, Dom, you and I called it from, from the beginning, if they move on from Case Keenum and add just a little bit more weapons, Broncos are scary. What I realized be. about being a Jet fan and you know or just being like you know looking in the NFL no matter how good your defense is if you don't have a good offense your defense is kind of has to constantly go back onto the field they're yeah. going to get tired oh, out yeah. easy and yep. that's how you lose the game so that's how that defense doesn't perform as well and I think that's what happened with Denver and I think it's going to keep happening because you know you still have a lacking hole at quarterback uh, even though know, you have Case Keenum I think for like two more years uh, obviously you traded away Demarius Thomas Emmanuel Sanders is getting up there in age even though he's still good you know you don't have many other weapons other than that either so we'll see all right, and and also to keep it moving along, we only got two more hires left, and we got to talk playoffs. The Packers hired Matt Lafleur as their head coach. Love it, Matt, you do. I love it, and this you know guy, why? Why Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, he's gonna have a, a field day. Guy, he's gonna have a field day. He's a guy he can bully around. Say this is how we do it here. He's the new Peyton Manning. It doesn't matter who you put around him. <laughs> he's in charge. Matt Lafleur is a pawn, and team. the ownership is a hundred percent behind Aaron Rodgers. I love it. I think that that works when you have the right quarterback. They should have kept Joe Philbin. No interceptions. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. The, the Joe Philbin <laughs> era was off to a complete great start, and then they just let him walk away. And I'm just kidding. I, I completely 
love the Matt LaFleur hire. Love it. Uh, I think that Marcus Mariota had a good time with him as the offensive coordinator. I thought his numbers were pretty good. They weren't great. They weren't outstanding. But they were solid. They were solid for Mariota, who can kill you in two ways, with his arm and his legs. It makes me sad. I the, want the only to difference be great. Is, I want to bring right. something up real quick, and this is just a question that, you know, just a yes or no answer. Do you think the Bucks regret taking uh, Winston instead of Mariota? Yes. Yeah, well, I think now, that, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Looking back 100%. at it. 100%. I, I, I think that's totally right, yeah, easy. That's I, I really do. But at the time, Winston was better. He was a better yeah, player. Yeah. Stat-wise. Coming yeah. out of Florida and, and, State, But look too. at it. You, you had to put out a PR fire. Uh, that that was created during college. You had to put out a PR fire that was created in the NFL, and then another one. I mean, he's a disaster of a person, not and, a player. He's, and you never hear anything bad about Mariota either. You, no, you, you, you never no. hear you any. Never hear his name. You never hear any <laughs> off the field stuff. The only thing that you see is his on the field stuff, which you know hasn't reached that level of great yet. But I think he's well on his way. And you know what? I think losing Lafleur is going to hurt, but. With Mariota, I really, truly think that he'll reach that level of being, wow, this kid is so good, you know? I hope so. And finally, the Cleveland Browns hire Freddie Kitchens as their head coach. Freddie Kitchens and Baker Mayfield thrived together after uh, Hugh Jackson left. But honestly, you know, we all would. But, w- but what do we think of this hire, Freddie good Kitchens? Hire. It's a good Very hire, good hire. In-house, I-, I have no problem with it. I, I-, I really don't have a problem. It's them. hard not to like it. Um, I just want to see first year... Big, big maturation out of Baker Mayfield, and you're sold that this can work. They clearly have a relationship. They clearly like each other. I think they trust each other, and I think that's important to head coach quarterback. So um, I like it. I like the hire. Um, I would have preferred if they were able to retain, and I know I give him a lot of crap. Greg Williams. Greg Williams. Yeah. Um, having said that, um, I, I still think there's enough on this defense that you don't need Greg Williams to make that defense good. Miles um, Garrett is a is is a monster. Uh, so I I think there's a, Denzel Ward's pretty good Denzel too already. Denzel Ward, really Ward good. yeah. Um, yeah so I, I think any not any D coordinator. Do you remember, do you remember when they had Joe Hayden? Come in, yeah, remember that? Yeah, I remember, remember that. Top quarterback, yep. cornerback in the league. Yeah, Florida prodigy. I wanted him. Oh my so, god, of course you <laughs> did. Oh, Florida! He's a Gator! Tim Tebow! I'd rather him over Eli Manning! No, I would not, actually. So, let's talk playoffs, guys. Nick... Colts versus the Chiefs. I've been I've been rolling over in my bed all night, uh, not because of this, because I, I was sporting a huge hangover from my bender last night. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, you're not. I saw pictures. Yeah, you did. Too. Um, <laughs> it's a real I, story. I've come right? to a They're wonderful. Thing. I, I, I've decided I had to come to in the morning too. Yeah, yeah. I had to come to. <laughs> I had to come to. <laughs> screw you. I had to come to <laughs> screw you. You put morning. it on the internet. I did put it on the, which I never do, and you know that. Yeah. Can we get to football? Yep. Continue. Um, I've been rolling over in my bed about this. Andrew Luck scares the hell out of me. But what I figured out is if the Chiefs defense can do one thing, and one thing only, I think that the Chief offense will over. Power the Indianapolis defense, and that is shut down T.Y. Hilton. If we can just do that, people are saying it's all on luck. It's all on luck. He's the X factor. Which it is. I don't think it is. It's I think T-Y. it's T.Y. Hilton. I think if you shut him down, I think that this he is their big play, big money guy. I think that they can make that. That's just enough. If you, T.Y. has a big game to, uh, tomorrow. I think that's the game for the Chiefs. Just just keep in mind that luck can kill you when he spreads the ball I around understand. too. Oh, yeah, and, and that's people, so. Eric Ebron is his favorite target in the red zone. Keep so that in mind. Eric Ebron, uh, uh, Jack Doyle, Marlon Mack. Been, Marlon Mack. They've been they've been effective. And Andrew Luck's a great player. He's gonna get his. You can't stop that. And he certainly don't have enough on defense to stop that. But double team this guy every chance you get. Help, protection, T.Y. is the X factor in this game. If they can shut him down, the Chiefs win. Dominic, Chargers versus Patriots. What do you think? Oh, uh, well, I have to be honest. I am really, I am sticking with the Chargers. I am and, too. And I'm, with you. I'm sorry. You know, in the past, you know, I can really never pick the Patriots unless it's unless I have to, you know. But uh, they don't look right. No, I, no. I, I, I will say this. Throughout the whole season, they, you know, didn't look as good. But you can't. Can't like you can't take them out of it. it you can't, yeah, you can't take you them really out of it. Can't. I'm picking the Chargers just because I think they have the team, to, you know, to just beat the Patriots to bring down Belichick and Brady. But you know, they're always it, in the playoffs. You know, th- they have the home field advantage. Even though the Chargers have been thriving when they're on road games, I believe they're they're nine and zero. Nine and zero, yeah. So you know, you got but that. New England's also eight and zero at home. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, 
I'm, I'm rolling with the Chargers, and real quick, I know you just switched to the game, but I just want to bring up something. Yeah. I just want to bring up how good the Colts are right now, and they still have $121 million in cap space. I yeah. just wanted Ooh, to bring that up. Le'Veon wow. Bell. No. In and the no, back no, Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no. Why double, are they going to sign Le'Veon Bell? They double, have Marlon Mack. Double down on your offense. The Colts problems no. are defense. I get that, but they have fixed their offensive line. It's time to double down on offense. Defense doesn't win championships anymore. End of story. Uh, Dom, Dom, Le'Veon Bell. Story. Le'Veon Bell is either going to be a Colt or a Jet. That's no, all I'm all right, going to say. I understand that, but I don't think they're going to be signed. I think Marlon Mack, I, I don't think you're going to want to bring in a guy like Le'Veon Bell. But Le'Veon Bell is not going to come. I don't care if he's making the money. If he's not getting all the touches or almost all the touches. He's going to request a trade. He's, he's oh, yes. not going to be happy. First thing. Le- he, Bell he, cares about one thing, one thing only, getting paid. As okay. long as he's paid, he doesn't care. I think the Jets are going to offer him more money than the Colts. I think so, too. I they think, like, like I said, he's either going to be a Jet or a Colt. And I, Just when you said look, 121 mil, all I thought was Le'Veon look, Bell. This is all That's I'm all say. I thought. That's all I'm say. Just so we can move on to the playoffs. I don't w- Whether you think he's going to come to the Jets or not, that doesn't bother me. But I just don't think the Colts are going to be interested in them. I, I don't like all this hype around the Colts. I understand I, it in the beginning. In the beginning of the season, yes. But then Marlon Mack finally found his own. The only reason why he's linked to the Colts is because of the money. They That's can use literally better cornerbacks. It. They can use, I don't know. The, the, You're I, right. And all Frank I'm Wright saying loves is, loves running backs for the record. All I'm saying is, money's green. Right? Okay, so... Right, move on. So, and Jets fly. <laughs> Chargers. <laughs> I'm going Chargers. All right, and, next, and next, ju- just go off to uh, your game, the Chiefs yeah. and the Colts. I'm going Chiefs. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'm, I'm going to... I, I honestly, appreciate your your, con- um, your bat. I'm, I'm going Colts. What, what do you guys think? Colts or Chiefs? I'm going to have to I'm go going Colts. With Chiefs. I'm going Colts. All right, so Colts and Chiefs. All right, so Chargers, Patriots. I'm going Sandy, Los Angeles. I keep, <laughs> you almost I'm, I'm, I'm going Chargers. Charge yourself. San Diego I'm, Chargers. Okay, what I do you think you guys are crazy. This is what the Patriots do, Patriots are going to win this game. They're going to win it outright. I just I, this has been a I cute story. It's been a real cute story. Yeah. And they're the most balanced team, but the Patriots, this is what they live for. Do you see upset or no? Not at all. Not at all. So you don't think they stand a chance? No. You see a blowout? That's all right. I don't see a blowout. I, I see, think it's going to be a close, I see a close game. game, but I see the Patriots overcoming some miraculous drive from Tom Brady. What else can Fourth we expect? Fourth quarter, can I give ask him you a something? minute left. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Who would the X Factor be if the Chargers were to win? Shut down Gronk. That's it. Yeah, if you which I think Derwin James can do. Easy. We'll see. Easy, huh? This is the, maybe That's the best tight matchup. end we've ever watched. Oh, I don't know. This year, I think he's falling off. I think Kelsey's better already. He's I healthy. Think, I think Ertz is better than both. He's healthy. That too. All right, Matt. Cowboys. Rams. This one's going to be fun. It, I, this is my favorite game. I no, love this, this one. This is going to be the one to watch out of the whole weekend. I'm really excited for this game. Uh, oh, we saw last week with the Seahawks. Uh, I'm not going to call that a fluke win. I think the defense just overall was able to shut them down. Offense has gotten better the last couple games, even going into the playoffs. We're gonna. I think Ezekiel Elliott's going to have a great game. Uh, but I, you know, I don't count the round the Rams out. By how can any, you? Their defense you really is great. Can't. I think the key thing for this game here is going to come down to the defense, despite how good Cowboys have been on offense Which defense? Lately. Both? No, I think both offenses are evenly matched, but overall, I think the defense is going to be the deciding factor here. I, I actually, how much do you think the Rams miss Cooper Cup? They miss it, They miss him big time. Without without a doubt, he's been one of the key guys to make that defense as good as it is all season. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's going to be a close one here, but at the same time, it could change easy. Final answer. It's going to be the Rams. Okay, Rams so you're by, taking Ram, Rams. Rams by a touchdown. Uh, Rams by three. Okay. That, that's where I'm going. I think, honestly, I Nick, you kept saying that the Saints were destined. I honestly think that that's the Rams this year. They have been so consistent all year. Their defense has been inconsistent at times, but their offense has really bailed them out big time. Oh, yeah. I think Cooper Cup Drew has Brees been... too. Yeah, but Cooper Cup has been missed incredibly, but this is going to be the front seven for the Rams. That's going to be the huge X factor. I'm I th- taking Rams. I think, I, I think the Rams are going to win, but I think they're going to lose to the Saints or Eagles. I don't think they're making enough. the Super Bowl. I, I don't think they're going to lose to the Eagles. I think the Rams win this game by the skin of their teeth. I think the Cowboys match up so well. That front seven yeah. covers so well. I'm taking... I'll call a a score. 27-26, Rams win. Wow. Okay. okay. I like that. See, now that's going to be my favorite game. Now, Zach, Saints-Eagles. <sighs> the it's, silence it's, speaks it's, volumes, right? I, I have... <laughs> 
I have to go with the Eagles on this one. <laughs> just, Why? Just, just sure they got luck on their side. Don't they piss got off something Nick. Something on their side. Saint Nick just gets it done every <laughs> single time, man. He's always delivering. I gotta go. I have the another. Eagles. Uh, he's been okay. delivering for a half a year. Can we stop with this? This. Oh, he's the chosen one. No, he is the prodigal son. If he wins another Super Bowl, listen. I'll buy whoever him beats Tom him. Brady is the this. chosen one in my eyes. I'm listen. sorry. Okay, so it's Eli. Oh my God! <laughs> stop with. Nick Foles. Good the Saints Lord. are winning. Come on. Saints all the way for this one. The I'm Saints on. are winning. I'm, 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 I'm going Saints, honestly. Look, I, I think that this game is going to be very fun. I'm calling that last game last week a fluke. I really think if they didn't ice the kicker, the the Cubs would... The, <laughs> bleh, the Cubs, holy crap, Matt. <laughs> the, the Bears would should have won that game. Easy. They were better oh, on the, defense. The, the they, Bears that, deserved to win that game. They were the better yeah. team that game, no doubt. <laughs> Drew Brees is on a war path. And this dude is looking at the end of his career. I really think this is his last hurrah, and especially if he goes to a Super Bowl, Drew Brees is going to roll over this. Oh team. yeah, and something to roll keep in mind. Them. Something to keep in mind. It's going through the dome. If if oh, Nick no. Foles the... somehow comes out of the dome and beats Drew Brees, he's going to break the internet. If man. Nick he's going to break wins the oh, internet that if he wins. I will be, there's always the Super Bowl again. Crazy. <laughs> they have to win the Super Bowl. I will Bowl personally if they win this come game. into this show <laughs> and strip down into my underwear and say, Eric, you were right, Zach. You were right, <laughs> Matt. You were right. I think the only one in here that would like that is you. But <laughs> Saints, so Saints. All right, Saints I all know way. we got a call on the line, but we got to take a quick break. So we'll talk to the caller when we come back here on WHPC Sports Talk. You're on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. Come on, everybody, let's sing along with Bruce. Say it, show a little. F- Join me, Kim Tracy, for the music of Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band every Sunday at 1 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, Radio Point 3 WHPC, and with the iHeartRadio and TuneIn. Thanks. I like it, don't you, Nick? <laughs> you are listening to WHBC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. I'm Mike Pachetti alongside me. I got Nick Ormberger, uh, aka Longbeard Nick. <laughs> you know the only guy, the only guy that didn't have a beard in ZZ Top, his last name was Beard. Was and it no, really? Yeah, wow. the no only way. guy. Yeah, the only guy that didn't have a beard in ZZ Top, he was a drummer, and his last name was Beard. I call shenanigans. Nope, no shenanigans. Look it up. And along. Alongside him, Matt Charkowick. What's up? Zach Calabrese. Still hoping for Nick Foles here. We're, 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 <laughs> fingers if he crossed. gets to the Super Bowl, fingers I will crossed. wear his jersey for an entire year. No, you will not. Oh, no, you will not. That thing will smell. Don't, don't, it. It. don't make a promise you can't keep. And, of course, Dominic Arbolino. Yes, hello. I'm here. Yeah, what's up, Dominic? But we do have a caller on the line, as I promised. Caller, you are on WHBC Sports Talk. What's up? Hello, everybody. How are you? What's up, Dave? How are you? you? Uh, quickly, you brought up one day, and I, again, uh, the little I know about the internet and stuff like that. You said who was, you know, the greatest uh, football college coach, and I said, let me check graduation rates. Bear Brian. And then I'm, yeah, then I'm saying to myself, I'm looking at Florida State and I'm saying, what are they graduating with? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A one point nine GPA, and they're damn proud of it. And cramp yeah. legs. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and, uh, what's on your I mind? Have, I just have another point. Uh, my uh, my son-in-law's grandma, and this is like the greatest feat in the history of sports. His grandmother is being honored by the L.A. Clippers on the 31st. Oh, that's awesome. Being, Interesting. No, being a season ticket holder for 35 years. Really? Wow. Wow, well, good yeah. for her. I don't know who would go see the Clippers, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I don't know who would go see the Knicks. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Just tourist. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, but actually, she laid out money for season tickets to watch the, the, the Clippers forever and ever. That, that's so. awesome. I would love to be a season ticket holder one day. But that, that's yeah. awesome. one team one I day. want to also has a $50,000 uh, seat license. Since you have to oh, buy like the New well. York Jets? Uh, well, you know, just football 000. in general. <laughs> yeah. For, for the record, Eric was right. My Frank God. Beard was the drummer of ZZ Top, and yes, of course, he did not have a beard. That's <laughs> <laughs> so crazy, you know, right? He has one now. Oh, I'm sure he does, but not as long as the other guys. Yeah, obviously not. You know, he would wear one though. Length counts. <laughs> ju- ju- <laughs> just saying. Just work with what you have. When you guys do hockey, can you ask Eleanor a question? Yes. She, sure she, she, she's actually she's right actually here. Do you right want to answer? You should yeah, ask yeah, her yeah. now. Here. Hold on. Yeah. Eleanor, Eleanor, get headphones on. Let's go. Let's go. Do your job. Yes. Hi. Well, I'm, I think, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm 62. When did they outlaw blocking a shot in the NHL? 
I, I haven't seen anybody get the ice yet to block a shot. All I see is the ice capades out there. I mean, I, defensemen still block shots, but it's not a, it's not as popular because you block a shot, you break your leg, you break your ankle. Yeah, so, much, I mean, yeah. pretty much, those, who wants to stand in front of a Zendaya Chara slap shot? Not me. So mm, Anders Lee would. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, have, you have your players that are going to block shots. Um, Ian Cole was a great shot blocker for the Penguins. Um, Tanner Glass, Bulletproof Glass, they used to call him on the Penguins. He was a great shot blocker, but, yeah. But no, my, my point being is way back when, when, when equipment was a little bit less uh, good, uh, 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 less, uh, how do I put it, durable than it was, uh, you know. So you're talking about 70s 80s. equipment then? Yeah, they got down and actually blocked the shot every night. And you actually applauded the guy when he kept, went off with a little bit of a limp. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Uh, the sk- hockey skates now have a plastic covering over it to protect um, ankles if you block a shot with your skate. And who, t- so. and who told them not to block the shot? The agents or the coaches? Uh, probably the agents. Probably the agents. Probably agents. Yeah. Yeah. Both. Yeah. agents get you the money. The coaches just play you. Okay, have a good show. You too. All right, Bye. thank By you, By the way, that, that shot... Uh, that Bailey shot last night to win oh. the game. Wow. Oh, I love it. So good. That was, uh, a g- that was great. The only shot on goal, too, for the third period. Yeah. Yeah. John Tavares is a product of Josh Bailey, and I will not be afraid to say that. I'm oh, also listen, kidding. Listen, I don't care how Josh Bailey said this. See, uh, pff, terrible contract now. Uh, we're not, we'll get he's into a, hockey. He, he's but... a lifetime Islander now. He's one of the greatest to ever do right. it. Yeah, I'm but, also yeah. kidding. Come on. <laughs> All right, but look. I like him a lot. I'm sorry. This is, what can you not like? He used to be hated. A lot uh, more, lot. big time. Hey, but you know what? He grew on me. Yeah, but then I, I like Josh. Yeah. Was the money in now? Look at him. You grow up he's in the not... shadow of John Tavares. See how you how you're treated. Well, Ugh. you know what? He, he, he's All doing right, okay is, so far. His name isn't John Tavares. It's Pajama Boy in New York. Yeah, Pajama <laughs> Boy. <laughs> you know, what? I'm not. And I February 27th, when Toronto 28th. comes to the cup, col- 28th, wait. whatever, everybody's going to be wearing pajamas in the stands. Yes. Oh my god. No doubt about it. <laughs> that's going to be. so If funny. that's true, I'm coming to that game. Not not an Islander fan. Don't care. But I'm wearing pajamas. You're going to want to be there. The energy is going to be off the charts. You would be the only guy going the devils! And then you'll be the only guy. I will wear my Maple Leafs pajamas. (laughs) Oh, you'll get murdered. Oh my god, if you do that, I will not save you. I don't know you. I can't help you I thought about coming home for it, but I come home a couple days after, so there's no point. They also play again? I come home a day after because isn't 28th the last day of February? Screw school. Come down. Yeah, you know what? School. Uh, we'll see. We'll, School's we'll not see. good. We'll Come see. on now. School is but. for fools. All right, so we will get the hockey in a little bit, but we got to get the quick baseball here as Who the cares? Yankees made some news. Yankee fans care. As they signed DJ LeMahieu for two years worth $24 million. Nick, does this close the door on Manny Machado? It's, the door is closed when they it's signed done. Troy Tulowitzki. This, this is them overpaying. Not even overpaying, because it is an overpay. It is an overpay, but 100%. They're, but they're just protecting themselves from what happened last year. They lost infielders, they lost outfielders. They were playing Shane Robinson and Luke Voigt. Luke Voigt worked out. To Tyler be fair. Wade. Tyler Neil Wade. Walker. They were playing guys who had no business being on the field. And Neil Walker actually was very good, let's be honest. Neil Walker Neil was, Walker he, had his spots. He wasn't he, very he was, good. He, was, he had some clutch. He was, he, he was serviceable. That's the most But my point is they're it. overloading on utility people because they don't want to fall into the same trap. They never had an. Uh, uh, Manny Machado's door was closed the moment Giancarlo Stanton's uh, contract came to New York. Not Harper's. Not Harper's. Because they would have had the money to spend. They would have had the money to spend. And, and on top of that, Didi, maybe Didi's still hurt. Let's 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 put, go back and play uh, whatever that's called history. There's the there's a word for it. But you go back and history. We'll play history. <laughs> you go back, say Stanton wasn't here. Didi still gets hurt, and he's not here through halfway next year. Then there's Machado. Machado's still here. Machado's here now. This does not last this long. So where do you think he's going? Phillies. Machado, Phillies, Phillies, I, I or the think Dodgers. Phillies make the most sense right now. You don't see the Dodgers, um, White Sox, think, White Sox, even. I think okay. Bryce Harper winds up back in the National. In the Nationals, Nationals. So yeah. Yeah. Phillies make the most logical I think sense Boar, right I now. I think Boris completely screwed that up. I, I, I thought it's going to be competitive. I, and, and I thought Harper would have <laughs> made a lot of sense need. to the Dodgers as Me they too. traded Kemp away and a lot of their outfield. So as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, Harper's going there to check it They're in full rebuild. They're in full rebuild. Th- the only person they're keeping is Clayton Kershaw, and that's just because he's history. You Bellinger. Have to keep him. What? Bellinger. Yeah, does, does that really... What is that? I'm sorry. Bellinger, that's it? That's it? That's all you have for me? If they're Be- in full rebuild, they would have traded Turner already. No shot. They're young. They're, they have Turner's control. not young. Turner is, thir- what, 30... He's got to be at least over 32. He's not over 32. He's 30 years old. I'm, I'm calling you. I'm calling bull snack on that right now. Maybe 33 at the oldest. Check. Go ahead. Uh, he's but he's already it, said he's it. looking it up. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez. My mistake. God, All right. Can you Very stop? Aggressive. I, God. I will get mad at you for something else. I don't think the Dodgers are he's on 34. 
He's not that old. Are you kidding me? I am. Oh uh, my god! I'm not, I mean, I'm not kidding. I just looked it up. I'm shocked. I'm actually he's shocked. Also from that Long Beach, California. I had no idea he was that old. My God, he looks great for a 34 year old man, right? He does. Kudos he's, to Eric. He's, Congrats. <laughs> yeah, thank kudos you. Kudos to Eric. See, see, but having know, said that, keeping him does keeping him and keeping Bellinger right still doesn't right? <laughs> still doesn't mean that they're not in full rebuild. They just got rid of all. They're dropping cap space left and right. They're yeah, but o- didn't you think when that happened, it would have been like, all right, maybe Harper's going to land over there. No. They have no outfield. Right, look, I'm not going to say they're in full rebuild. F- if anything. Rebuild a reload, <laughs> rebuild, rebuild mode. It's not reload either. They're, no, nobody's. What, what They're you, coming off another World Series appearance. Do you think they would just give it up that quick? They're obviously not winning with the team as it's currently constructed. They ran into the Astros and the Red Sox, who were better than them. Obviously, that's so my how it, point. So how are they better than you? Rebuild. So how are they in rebuild if they're so close? The, wh- okay. If they weren't in rebuild, first of all, they know they don't have the, and, and I have turned the corner on Clayton Kershaw, they know they don't have the big money pitcher who can get it done for them. Okay. They know they don't have that. They're keeping him here because he's a Hall of Famer, because he is their legacy right now in this era of L.A. baseball. That's the only reason Kershaw hasn't been traded or let go. That's it. Because he's a hero in some respect to L.A. Dodger baseball. Jersey sales. Sir. Jersey sales. Jersey sales. <laughs> because they can make a big Money plaque notes. for him, make him feel good about himself. The o- that's the only reason he wasn't traded too. Okay? Now, having said that, Where's the big move? If they're if they're just reloading, where's the big move for the LA Dodgers? It should be Harper. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That surprises me then. Then why do you trade almost everybody in your outfield? Because they traded Puig also. Remember yeah. that. Because you I think want that was a good to, move to trade him though. He was uh, like even though he's been like he stepped up his game. I feel like just his attitude. I feel like he's always had a problem there in Los Angeles. He's the wild horse for a reason. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that's they just want to get rid of him. Owners aren't fans. They don't look at the sport like totally you and me. Totally get it. I get it. We, we, I, they don't look at it like I get you it. and me. I get it. I they totally understand. They are allowing that. their team to be mediocre this year. So so they can have higher draft picks, so they can draft and rebuild the farm system. That is a depleted farm system in, in uh, over in L.A. right now. The top ones are San Diego, are, are the White Sox. Atlanta. Atlanta. Big, big, big time. So that's my point. You're looking at a situation where, where they're willing to sacrifice the now for the future. And they won't have to take that long either because the new moniker in MLB, bring up the kids while they're young. I Who think cares? Nick also brings up a good point, too, because when you look at all the past trade deadlines, too, you see how the Dodgers have been buyers every single year. Yes. And they, they couldn't get over the hump. And they, and they, exactly. They can't get over the hump. So I think, you know, I think as the owners and possibly coaches, they'll have an influence on it, too, of course. I think they're realizing they have to, you know, switch over the whole team. But but the reason why I'm shocked, and I'm not saying that you're coming up with a bad argument, what I'm saying is, they couldn't get over the hump of getting to the World well, Series for the longest Speaking of the Dodgers, time. they did just make a trade. Oh yeah, speaking of which, they just traded for uh, Russell Martin, so Ooh. they... Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is creaming in their pants they over had, Russell Martin. They, they had no catcher. Put money on the now for the oh, World for Series. for God's sake. Would they, you stop? Just stop. They had no catcher. They had to make no, a it's, move. It's definitely, yeah. it's and just of course Russell I'm Martin, talking about cream have... cheese for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what? We digress from the original point. DJ LeMahieu, who is actually a really good Wonderful player. Fielder. Yep. Wonderful fielder. Wonderful fielder. Excellent defender, and he can play different positions. So maybe, you know, shortstop, second base, first base. Because don't forget, they just brought back Greg Bird from arbitration. So that's insurance for Voight, if honestly he's still here. Uh. But if they both stink it up, they can put LeMahieu at first base. I think that this was a great move. The Mets also made a great move, in my mind, as they signed Jed Lowry to a two-year deal worth $20 million. Kind of similar to the uh, DeGrom just came back for 17 mil for the year, and uh, and Thor also just came back for 6 mil. This is Uh, what I want to say about Jed Lowry real quick. Not like it's going to matter if Machado goes to the Phillies and and, um, Harper goes back to the Nationals. We're still going to be at the bottom. I like the deal for the Mets in terms of the price, but I will say you have a crowded infield already. You do. You need this to play these younger guys like Alonzo and McNeil. And I understand this is just insurance and just in case they're not ready, just in case of injuries go down, you can throw mainly Frazier there, exactly. and everything. You know, you could put Lowry in there. And I, I think Lowry's a good player. He's, he was good for the A's last year. But the thing is, is that they have a crowded infield. I would like to see more of the youngest player. You know, I want them to be brought up. I want to see Alonzo.
Lonzo. I want to see too. McNeil. Me too. And I think if this is restricting them from being up, I think it's a bad move. I like I like the deal just Keep in terms in mind. of the price, but it's also it's, you're stuck with him for two years now. Keep in mind, because you're also stuck with Todd Frazier, and if he stinks it up, you can put Larry there. Okay, exactly. I understand, but... That was going to be my point. I don't know. I, I just want to see the younger players get some more action. I think that's a problem with the Mets. You, guys, you have to see what they have. All right, fair enough. And now, that's enough baseball, because Eleanor is in the room, so you know it's time. It's time to... Let's do that hockey. So let's do it. It's time. So, Eleanor, hi. How are you? Hi. Come on, get, get a little closer to the mic. Come on. Take my mic. I don't <laughs> want to steal it from Dominic. No, well, make, you can. Make I'm, out with that mic. I, I am allowing you to, because Dominic's not always here anymore. You are, all right? It's your show. It's okay. just I yours. So, <laughs> so let's just get on with it. So, first off, the state of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, they just signed Casey DeSmith to a three-year contract. And how do you feel about I'm that? I'm very happy about it. I think that he's a great backup for Matt Murray, and Matt Murray is 8-0 and oh since returning from his injury. So, you should so bash him a lot good. more. Well, you know, I don't like Matt Murray, but he's been playing very, very well. And I'm happy that Smith is. Can't complain I with I think that. another goal is 8-0, too. Oh, yeah. Robin just, Leonard, yeah. Hey, yeah. yes, yes, I, yes, I, I have a lot of respect <laughs> for him. I really yeah, so do. I. I do. And I wish him the best. But yeah, Penguins, Patrick Hornquist is out, and so is Zach Aston Reese. So. so are they are, are they just beginning to be on the rise now? Is this the time, like, all right, here come the Penguins? Yeah, I think so that this is where, year. after the All-Star break is when they really... Excel. And the so, All Star break is coming. And yeah. by the way, the last man and Chris Letang yes, I'm so just happy got in. I got that notification. I, I was so happy. I am not. I wanted Anders Me Lee, too. but you know, this just. I honestly think that at this point in the season, obviously, you can change. Chris Letang should be considered for the Norris Trophy. It is his best wow. he's ever played. All right. And he had a bad season last year, and this is his best season so far. All right, now let's go to the dumpster fire, the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bannington uh, has been great. Yes, yes, and he might take Jake Allen's starting job. Please. I honestly please. think because. I don't like Jake Allen either. I don't think that he's talented at all. I really don't. Um, and the defense isn't good. And you know who's he, been really good lately? Robert Thomas. Yes, Robert Thomas, my London Knight. Um, <laughs> he is so, so good. And he's going to get better every single game. You already see it. And now let's head over to the New Jersey Stop. Devils. Can we not? John Tavares ripped it's this sad. apart last night. I don't need to relive horrible. it. That was horrible. This is freaking embarrassing. I just Should goalies, we go on? I mean, Keith Kincaid, <laughs> uh, the McKenzie... Blackwood. Again, bad defense. I don't know how much you want goalies to do. How long is Taylor Hall out, by the way? I think he's still out for another couple weeks. A few weeks. Yeah, it's oh, not good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, at this point, shut him down for the season. No yeah, way. Honestly, really? I mean, no, no. I wouldn't no, want to do I that. I have my fantasy team. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Dom also looks like Taylor Hall, for those of you that have been listeners for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, he looks like Taylor Hall. I don't bit. know how I really feel about that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're injured a lot. Nick hates you. Anyway, St. Nick over here. So anyway, let's head over to the New York Rangers who Can just got skip manhandled. Who got skip. manhandled by the yeah. Islanders yeah. last oh. night. Skip, please skip. <laughs> Haven't won a game in 2019 yet. Yes, so. they have five straight losses, eight of their last ten. Well, this um, has been awful, Lundquist too. has been very, very, very bad at this point. The tank. queen goes Hasn't down. Hasn't he given up I like just, 15 goals now? It doesn't matter. At he this stinks. point, they should tank and try to get Jack Hughes or Capo Caco. Leonard and Grice run New York, man. And finally, the New York Islanders. I want to say this real quick about the Rangers. Do you think, do you think, this is quite the, I understand Cam Talbot has not worked out, but do you think they maybe possibly wish they traded away Lundquist instead? Mm, that, yeah. At that point? Hall? Yeah, at that point, yeah. I know you're not going to trade a franchise guy like that. I know it's not going to happen. The at that point, just maybe. Won't do it. Simply they, for traded, they traded, they traded Callahan and, and McDonough, no problem. Idea, so. At, the, I mean, at that, that point, really no one's right. safe. Yeah. <laughs> right. at, at that point, maybe not. And finally, Really quick, the New York Islanders. No, I mean, they're good. They're All right, good. that's enough. I just, I, the goalies have been very, very good, and I think that they're the reason that they are doing so it's, well. It's the Barry Trotz effect. They have. Yes, it is. They, it really is the Barry Trotz effect, because I'm going to say this. I don't really think they have that many you know, great players. They have good players. They have Barzil, who's obviously their best player, you know, that's not the, even a it's question. It's the only flashy player, too. Yes, and he, yes. You know, he, he's the all-star. But I think what Trotz is doing is that he's able to make these guys work together. And I, we were talking about this before early in the Total team show. effort, no individuals. And, yeah, and Eleanor said, you know, that's sometimes, that, that's a good thing. You know, you don't, all, you don't need all these flashy guys. You have all pretty these much everyone. team players. Yeah. All right, and guys, this was a wonderful show. This is brought to you by the lovely people here at 90.3 WHPC. And now it's time for us to bring in the closers. So, Nick Ornberger, you start it off. Uh, we'll start off with the Chiefs. Uh, tomorrow, 425, going to be a big game. I expect a Chiefs win. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think people need to watch that. Uh, 
last night's showing tells you exactly why John Hines was the wrong decision in giving him a contract extension. We haven't had a decent head coach in New Jersey since freaking Pat Burns. I'm done. <laughs> Matt, what a night on the hardwood where Marcus Aldridge was all over the... Uh, the sp- the blah, 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 blah. English! <laughs> oh my god, English. He destroyed the uh, OKC Thunder last night. Career high, 56 points. It was a blowout. It was a close game. It was everything. It was a fantastic showing and double OT. Zach, make it quick. Shout out to Hofstra Basketball and the triple overtime win yesterday against William uh, William and Mary. That's her 11th win in a row. Can we see the pride in the uh, NCAA tournament this year? Uh, no, nope. no. <laughs> Dominic uh, Brown's not going to return to the Steelers next year, and I'll see you guys in March. All right, I'll see you in March, Eleanor. Congrats to Finland; they are your 2019 World Junior Champions. Uh, they knocked out America. Yes. Uh, go Islanders! The Queen went down. Henrik Lundqvist to shell of his former self, and honestly, I know there's a lot of season left. I think the New York Islanders will be in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. They also, will. we're NCC. You can't call out Hofstra. <laughs> <laughs> from Nick Gornberger, from Matt Charkwick, from Zach Calabri, from Dominic. Arbolino, Eleanor Champion, Arthur Shetty saying in the wise words of Jack Black. I'll catch you guys on the flip flop.